for Profit Live. I'm excited that you are watching today, whether that's on Facebook, LinkedIn, or YouTube, because we have an exciting show. For those that are listening afterwards, I would encourage you to head over to Facebook, join our Heat Press for Profit community, where you can see a lot of uh, different parts of this content, including some photography, which is our primary topic today. And uh, this is conversational, so I would encourage you to chat in. If you are watching live, let us know who you are and where you're watching from. We'd love to know that you're here today. And the reason I'm so excited today is because we have Jax Apparel joining us. And we have the founder of Jax Apparel, Jax herself, that's going to talk about us, uh, talk to about her journey and starting the business. Uh, but more than that, we're going to get into where the business is at today and some ways she's been very successful with product photography and hopefully be able to share some tips to get you taking better photos in your apparel decoration business to highlight that product to sell more products. So uh, without further ado, we'll go ahead and get this show started and let me bring in Jax into the screen. How are you doing today, Jax? Hey, guys. How's everyone today? Yeah, doing doing great here. So I've been looking forward to... Uh, bringing you on for some stalls content for quite a bit. I know we reached out some time ago and yeah. uh, this podcast opportunity seemed to be uh, the perfect one to, to learn a little bit more about you and what you have going on. So tell us about Jack's Apparel. So obviously I have to start with the name, Jax. Yes, that is my name. Um, my full name is Jacqueline. Um, when I was about two years old, my grandma just started calling me Jax and it kind of just stuck. So upon naming a business and getting a logo and all those things, that can be kind of hectic, right? Yeah. Well, I did not want Jax in the name at all. Um, I honestly fought back with it all the time. And I just had really supportive people. It was like, when we meet you, you are the brand. You sell the brand. It's you. And um, I'm thankful for that now because I wasn't expecting that. Um, so, yeah. So that's kind of where the name originated from is okay let's just it's jacks like let's just do it and um but everyone calls me that my grandma my nana my grandpa yeah so so yeah so that's the best it's, it's a fun part of it but it is me so um, well, i love it i love it and that, that really pulls it through and says like your business is really an extension of your personal brand and your personal brand is important to the business. Right? And, and everyone should be right. Like if you're the person behind it, you want to stand behind your brand, right. And stand behind what you do. Um, and it also, it holds me accountable to be, I mean, my name is attached to it, right? Like I can't hide. <laughs> um, and that's for the highest highs and the lowest lows. So it's definitely important to me. Awesome. So tell me uh, for our audience that's listening or, or viewing it, when did you start the business? Where's the business located? And like in a nutshell, what do you do in apparel decorating? Okay. So I originally, um, I'm still a real estate agent, believe it or not. Um, but obviously everyone knows that market is always shifting. Um, I actually have a really artistic and graphic background, right? So sometimes you just can't dull that down. Like it just, it just keeps coming and you can't let it go all the time. So um, I actually coached travel girls basketball um, for four years. And I was actually contacted by another local company and said, hey, we want to represent your brand. Can we can we sponsor you? And I was like, come on, let's go. Well, I showed up to the establishment and they just needed help. Right. And so I jumped right in and just helped um, on a no fee basis. And I was like, oh, my God, like I was meant to do this. Right. Like I have to do this. So, um, and I'm not in any conflict with that business, even though it's local anymore. Um, so that's how I was like, I have to, I can't give this up, right? Like I, I got my feet wet and now we need to jump in. So um, that's what I chose to do. So we started it last year um, at the end, I don't want to say the end of COVID, you know, but you know, that's when we did, which was a very massive risk, right? Mm -hmm. All of us in the business know that was a massive risk. Um, but again, I wasn't giving it up. It's a passion and I chose to follow it. So, okay. So when you started and you're in Northeast Ohio, just for our I viewership, am. um, I am. What, when you started the business, like what was, did you start with equipment? Did you start outsourcing? Like how did so, you functionally get started? Yep. So the business I previously worked with had stalls equipment, um, very quickly became obsessed with it because it was efficient. It was smooth. It was easy to operate, right? Like the quality, right? Like 
we could sell products based on just the quality of equipment we used. Um, so that was super important. Um, so, and then we were doing apparel, any kind of apparel and hats. And then what I kind of being a female in the business was brands of clothing, right? Like no offense, fellas, but sometimes you pick that thing that's comfortable, right? Or that is reusable or if it gets damaged, right? Some of us ladies like to work on very comfortable. We like to look good, right? And what I was able to bring to the table were, hey, we're only paying this much more for something, in my opinion, this much nicer, something that's gonna last. And then that popped off marketing wise is, hey, because of the off the things we could offer and the way we order through stalls, you could have this shirt at this price level and you could also offer this to your clients and have this price point, right? Well, then what they started seeing is these were going down and the quality items, right, were being ordered more. And then people were wearing them more. So that was for, important. For, for actual clothing brands. Yeah. So actual clothing brands. And I would always say one of my sales pitches, which I don't believe it's a sales pitch. I think it's very honest. I don't want you just wearing my apparel on times you're going to see me. Like, I want you wearing it to the grocery store. I want you wearing it to church. I want you wearing it to your kids' events. I want you wearing it to your family's house. I want you wearing it all the time, right? Because first of all, I want you comfortable and it's your brand that I created. So at the end of the day, it's not about me. It's about them representing their own brand and being comfortable in something that they love and have passion for, which is their name brand. Mm. So yeah. that's a game changer. I love that. And I love that focusing more on uh, the premium and something that's uh, going to get worn out, pun intended, mm -hmm. worn out right, to the event right. and then just worn a lot over the life of the garment. Right. Well, and layering and logo placement, right? And that's a huge thing. And that transfers over into photography. What are we trying to showcase? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's great. And and so that's really what uh, sucked me in. Uh, you know, I'm in, I'm in the heat press for profit group. I go in there often to try to like, just learn, mm -hmm. answer questions when I can, and really uh, to get ideas for content so we can help other apparel decorators to achieve their business goals. And when I saw your product photography, just the amount of engagement it got with even in our <laughs> confined group, I was like, there's something here and this stuff is awesome. So we need to be Thank able you. to learn uh, what you're doing. So I'm going to share a photo real quick so everybody can appreciate this. But for those uh, just listening, you'll still be able to uh, get some tips uh, from today's session. Um, talk to me about uh, first this client, what you've done here, and really how you set up to get this quality of photo. Yeah. So I, I think everyone's going to be really shocked how easy this is. And I know one of the questions was asked, can anybody do this? You absolutely can. Um, I want, I would love to say this is so fancy. I promise you it's not right. So, um, this is a, obviously a high quality hat. Obviously we left the logo on there on purpose um, to show what kind of quality hats we can get, right? Like you're going to a mall, okay? Um, this client is actually in the uh, No Prep Kings, actually on Discovery Channel, if anybody watches that. Um, so he's a No Prep King Revolution Racing, Tony McKenney. Um, so he just wanted something quality that they could sell. They have obviously a lot of fans that they could sell at the drag strip when they're racing on those weekends. So, um, and they were very interested in having the logo on multiple different hats, right? Because there's so many different people, not everyone wears the same thing. And that's something that we love to do, right? Like grandma could wear this hat, little brother can wear this hat and, you know, mom can wear this hat. Um, so they wanted variety and quality. Um, and in my opinion, with photos, they're drag racers, right? So we like to kind of, I want to say like couple the theme, right? So in my, I wouldn't put this hat with flowers, right? right. Like yeah. I wouldn't put this hat next to ballet slippers. Okay. So, you know, we chose to stay with the concrete and that is literally, and like I said, I think people are going to be very surprised. This is literally the concrete out in the parking lot of the shop. Yeah. So for those listening, uh, what we have on the screen is one of Jax's photos. And uh, just it's decorated with a dimensional logo um, that is uh, Revolution Racing. Uh, she's already explained that this logo went across many different products uh, to mm -hmm. be able to serve uh, different customer types and how they wanted to uh, represent or what colors they wanted to wear. 
Um, we're looking at a new era 5950 uh, flat bill snapback cap, and it's laid down on this um, on this base. Uh, that's the other element coming through in the photo. That is the parking lot, as we've just found out. Yeah, like, and it, yeah, it's literally the concrete. <laughs> awesome, awesome. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and toggle to another one so we can uh, dive through. And and so what? It seems like you're varying what you uh, are laying the product down on to create the photo. What's the story behind? We do well again. This is this is the same. This is Tony McKenney's. This is actually the name of the car. Um, is actually Novocaine. And so in the last M1, when I, I really hope everyone goes and looks at the pictures because they are so important. Um, the last finish was a uh, domed matte emblem, okay? Um, kind of set in that bottom right-hand corner of the cap. Um, it was a six-panel cap, so at the bottom. And now this one is actually a metallic domed. Um, and it's actually kind of, what would, what would you say, Josh? Like, I don't know, 45 degree, a little bit, like, yeah, it's about on somewhere around probably a 35 to 45 yeah. degree angle. Yeah, kind of um, tilted on the cap, right? Um, and we put this one actually, and again, like literally the the rustic wood table in the shop. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I love that. And so uh, mixing up uh, the environment where you're taking the photo, um, yep. we're working with premium dimensional logos. You've already talked about uh, the domed finish emblem. And for mm -hmm. those that are interested, the product is, is flex style. Um, yep. All Jax is doing is heat applying these and we'll, we'll go yep. into that in a little bit to create the looks, but you have the flat finish and now we have the uh, metallic finish. And I was wondering this myself, like, are you charging more for one or the other, or is it around the same price point for metallic versus flat? I actually charge the same. I'm um, super transparent with all of that. Um, because at the end of the day, this specific client, um, was trying, he was making profit selling them at the track. Right. Mm -hmm. So I gave them my flat price. And then I said, Hey, if you want to go make money, this is what, this is what you can go up to. Right. And yeah. you charge what you want to charge. Cause that was his merchandising plan. Um, and I've actually had the pleasure of going there with them and helping them sell things. And, you know, everyone has a story and it's just, it's, it's fun to use apparel as part of that story. Yeah, and you're engaged in uh, this uh, racing community, correct? Mm -hmm. So you understand yeah. the customers and the needs uh, very well. Well, and they're just very different. I mean, right? Like, and you get every age range and a lot of at racing, actually sports in general, I feel is generational, right? So you have everyone from great grandpa to the newborn, you know, literally the newborn. And it, it's a fa they're family events. So I think that's really huge in the business to be able to hit that many generational things for all of those people. Yeah. And so we've looked at uh, six panel caps. It seems like uh, for that brand, for that design, you went with that sort of uh, lower left placement as we're, mm -hmm. as we're wearing the cap uh, down in that uh, front left panel. Uh, is that a popular location for you? Do you press that? For me, it's, it's a huge location. It's actually, it's my personal favorite. Um, and it's just, it's kind of been a, a lot of my, once they realized that they could do that, Right. Like yeah. that's like, again, a perk of stalls. Hey, we want 25 hats in the, with the emblem in the middle and we want 25 hats with it dropped to the, the, the left. I mean, that's a massive selling point. Right. Of Hey. And then that's a massive upsell also. Hey, why don't we do 25 in the left, 25 in the center? Now I just sold 50 emblems kind of without trying. Yeah, and, and sometimes the the hat design kind of dictates that, right? So if we're Absolutely. working with a you know a six panel cap versus a seven panel cap, yep. um, I imagine on the seven panel caps, you, the the center placement is is more Absolutely. popular. Is it? Yep, anything on a seven panel is always going to be centered. Um, for us, I've never I take that back. I know one time it was a smaller one, and we just dropped it to that bottom. It was I think it was one word, and we dropped it to the bottom right hand corner. But in this specific picture, um, we have the seven, seven panel and the six panel, and they're in two different placements. So again, variety, you know, to people that were purchasing them. Okay. And then brand of cap. I know I've seen quite a few new eras already um, that mm -hmm. you seem to be working with, uh, a little bit of Richardson. What what brands of caps are you relying on? And I guess the, the most important question is, why those brands for you? Okay. So multiple layers to this. Obviously, when anyone that was working in the business at the time of covid stock was you know we would laugh about it but at, the, at night we cried about it right yeah like, not kidding you know people i mean i i i will not 
people, we lost business because we could not get a black Richardson hat, right? Like I couldn't get their favorite hat. And it didn't matter if we're like, well, we can get this one. It's not what their fans were buying, right? So we started reaching out and getting creative and it was literally, okay, hey, we have this much extra money. Let's buy five new hats and try them, right? And let's get them on people's heads and let's get them in people's hands and let's photograph them, right? And let's see what they pick up on. And the new era was just, they had stock, they had color choices, they have variety because they have snapback, flat built, curved, right? Um, and we were able to offer that. So that's the main, yeah. those are the main reasons. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. Very, very practical, right? Got to be an inventory for you to be able to generate revenue and meet your customers needs. All yeah. That, that's so. kind of important in the business that we do. Yeah. Um, so I want to dive a little bit deeper. Uh, one, I love, um, the idea here where you've kind of brought in, uh, two caps, uh, in a photo. Uh, There's really actually just three, a, but you oh, can't, there. I see Yeah. You can't really see the other. Oh, one. I see it here. I see yep. it. Uh, the yeah. shadows in there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, over in the back right here for those watching. So yeah. uh, when I look at this, like the lighting, like if somebody wants to take high quality product photography, mm -hmm. uh, what are some of the tips you would recommend with how you are setting up uh, to shoot these? What's the setup look like? Okay, so everyone is gonna be shocked. Hold on to your seat here, folks. <laughs> this is literally smartphone photography. So my personal phone is an iPhone and I actually took this photo with an iPhone. Um, and my favorite setting in the iPhone is going to be portrait mode. Um, one reason it blanks out the background. This is actually, um, this one blacks out. There's multiple ones, right? So you want to switch. Um, if anybody is alert to an iPhone, supposedly, you know, droids have the same thing. I'm just not savvy on that. Um, but if you are just, you have to just kind of play with it, right? Well, this one has the special lighting. It has, literally will have a circle on your screen um, that will showcase what it's going to light up, okay? So, and then it blacks out the remainder, okay? So why this one is obviously important and we used it, obviously we wanna showcase our client's logo. That's massive, right? That's what we're trying to do. That's our client, that's, that's the person we care about the most and we wanna show their brand. Second of all, we want to show the hat and the quality and the details on the hat, right? Like, I don't care about anything else in the background. We're selling hats and emblems and selling, you know, this client's brand. So that's why, obviously, these just, these lighting, this lighting setup and that setting on my phone just got very popular because we love it and everyone else loved it too. Yeah, so, um, so you've really used the, that portrait mode. And mm -hmm. then uh, within there, you've had some options to really set your area of focus, yep. which depending on what you want to highlight, which is typically the logo and the brand, yep. drawing attention to that through the lighting. Is there any external lighting that's happening here outside of the work on um, the phone? No, that one was actually taken inside. Um, perks of living in Northeast Ohio, we always don't have that lovely can walk outside and we don't always have sunshine to use, right? Yeah. So again, being flexible and creative of what we could do inside the shop right and still do something cool so yeah the literally there's there was just sadness outside in ohio skies so we had to take it inside. <laughs> all right awesome well hey for those of you joining or listening we're, we're joined by Jax from jacks apparel she is talking to us about her business talking to us about it's very simple uh and easy to execute product photography uh tips as we're sharing some photos here which will be on our youtube channel at stalls tv and also within our heat press for profit group uh, we're getting some feedback, so we want to say hey to our live audience. Jane says, very nice, high-end looking Jane. photos. Uh, Skip, who is always very active with us here at Stahl, says, Skip. what's up? Uh, we also have uh, some racing fans chiming in, watching on YouTube. So, oh, yay. Pearls to Piston says, Love great them. to see you. Good to awesome. see you guys. And then uh, we have Trevor watching from PA. Neighbors. Yeah, and then we have everywhere from Kentucky to Massachusetts. There we go. To all the East Coast people are awake. Wait, there's a little nice weather here coming next to you. Oh, Arizona's in the house. All right, and then we have uh even up in Washington. So all over the place. I wonder if nice. anybody's watching uh, internationally today. Yeah, it's good to see you all here and Sacramento. There we go. There's our West Coast representing. We had everybody there. 
Yeah, and uh, Shelby's watching. She's another one of our stalls ambassadors. She'll be joining me uh, Monday uh, within Hi, our Shelby. group to do a live. And okay, I knew I knew we had some international watchers here. So we got South America. Oh, in love the house. it. Hi, okay. Kurt. Cool. So Kathy's watching. She uses portrait mode a lot as well. Um, I know not all of your photos are taking in uh, the no. inside environment. So let me pull up uh, this example. And here we're kind of exploring outside of caps and you're decorating. Yep. It looks like a duffel bag and another product. Yep. This was one actually sunny Florida. This is one of my clients in Florida and this is a Pop Warner football team. Um, we actually had the pleasure, Jack's Apparel actually designed this logo. This was not their original logo and they asked for a new logo design. So we did a new logo design and um, they are amazing and they put it on everything and like we support them very big. But they asked for bags to put all of their football equipment in. It's obviously children, so children can, can keep track of their items. Um, and again, I would never photograph a football bag right? Like we want to put it in the grass. We want to put it in, you know, in the dirt. We want to put it where, you know, it's going to be most all the time. So again, that's why we choose where we're taking photos and you see kind of where the light is, right? We want to show the different colored bags and that logo because we're proud of it. And so should they be. Yeah. What are some of the, we've talked a little bit about the dimensional emblems and flex style. This is another treatment here. What are your most relied upon uh, like logo styles and types that you're using product? Well, this is the twill, obviously, the, and because we could do a bigger, obviously they, on a big, huge bag for football equipment, we need a much bigger cost effective um, application. So that's why that twill, um, you know, and a lot of people, when they first, they thought it, you know, it does look very embroidered, right? And, um, but with all those different colors and stuff that just would have never been cost effective for time, cost or anything for this football team. So we are able to offer them a great product that's, you know, that was durable that, you know, and a lot of people did, and these shipped all to Florida, they ordered about 50 bags. And then, you know, they actually had names and numbers embroidered onto them in Florida. So, um, oh, yeah, super cool. fun. Yeah. Yeah. So um, kind of varying uh, the different treatments and using the best of of those treatments. And so something that that I feel is is challenging is like people are easily overwhelmed by the amount of choices. Oh, yeah. Um, you're only uh, a year or so into the business. I know you had experience prior to that. Um, how did you really explore the products and what tips would you have based on your experience for like exploring the products that you're ultimately going to make part of your line and show to your potential clients? How do you, how do you pare it down? Okay. So about, about two things. So you asked a couple questions, right? So first thing is how did I become aware of different products, right? Um, buying sample packs, you know, that's a blessing to be able to, Hey, get a sample pack of this, right? The sample pack of all the emblems that are offered um, and selling to clients, we would take all of them, right? Like look at all the options you can have. And, a lot of our business will always be education, right? We, I tell everyone it's a rabbit hole, right? Um, I try to ask and it's basically a, in a sales meeting, right? Like, what are you looking for to get out of it? So we're able to kind of narrow down what people need. Budget is obviously massive, right? For any of our clients buying things, what is your budget, okay? Um, and then obviously what are we putting it on? right? We all know that some things work with other things. Um, a lot of people, and um, I know I have photos of them, um, but a lot of the hat emblems I put on book bags. Mm -hmm. um, math, I put them on fanny packs. I've put them on pants, um, you know, and so they're very versatile, um, but just testing them out and seeing what works best for that client on multiple levels. Sizing is huge. Everyone knows with the, with the emblem, sizing is huge. So if they need something bigger, we have to explore those other options. Um, obviously, the group that we're all part of, um, you know, the heat press group and people talking and seeing what other people are doing. It's OK to ask other people questions. Right. It's OK to give other people advice. Um, and I think we should all support each other in all of those things. Yeah, I love it. And that's the spirit of what we're, we're trying to uh, help just fac facilitate with community. And yeah. uh, we have. A lot of business owners who freely share, freely ask questions. Yep. And it's been uh, phenomenal. So, um, so going through that, and did you actually use the sample pack choices to go out and show your client the choices? Oh, oh absolutely. So, um, with the first business that I was introduced with, we had a huge trailer that we actually took on site, 
and we had them all in boxes and we would, you know, our part of our sales is we would literally open the box and show them. And people are honestly mind blown. They don't realize that there's all these applications and then educating them. They're like, what do you mean? Like, you don't have to give someone 25 shirts in the same location in the same colors, right? Like it's a lot, it's very overwhelming, right? But showing people that it can be done to their budget and their needs is really what sells the items. And I do want to probe just a little bit deeper on the budget question because my uh, history is mo ma uh, mostly in sales. Yep. Uh, and a, what I find is a lot of people are afraid uh, to get to that one to ask the budget question. Mm -hmm. um, and then just like the potential tension that happens between you and client when we talk mm -hmm. about budget. So how are you able to, to navigate that? Um, and do you find clients just answering that question directly or what responses do you get? Um, I actually feel like I, I kind of like, I feel like I have a knack to just kind of ease into it. Right. Like, I mean, perfect example is I pull out, you know, Hey, there's this hat, right. There's this hat. And I basically show them, right. All these levels of things, right. There's this, there's this best, better, best. Like, you know what I mean? Like, right. great. How, what do you like? Right. And then I, I should up tell them, right? Transparency. This hat is going to cost you. I mean, this is a, what, this is the new era snapback. Like this hat is not $3 blank. Yeah. Right. So I think it just flows naturally as, Hey, this is what you like. This is what it's going to cost you. So you do find yourself utilizing like good, better, best, and at least starting with some choice and saying, Hey, do we want premium brand? Do you have budget for that mm -hmm. to flex? Do we want something middle of the road or do we look yep. for an economy? Option? Well, and I think a lot of people, I think it, the emblem, if they're going to buy 25 or more, right. I think the opportunity to be able to buy a $3 blank to a $10 blank range, right. I could buy five of each and you could have the best of all four levels of quality and not sacrificing that emblem quality and that look. Um, so that's massive for me. Yeah, I love that. So think about uh, tips for decorators listening and watching. Think about the products you're using. Mm -hmm. um, with Emblem products, we know price is driven uh, by quantity and also by size. So by mm -hmm. hitting those trendy print locations of the lower left, not only are we getting something on trend, we are controlling our cost a bit, right? Yep. To make sure we're making good money. And then also utilizing the fact that we're using a heat press. And so we can take this emblem at 25 or at a hundred pieces across a product assortment, yep. whether that's within all hats or whether that's a hat, a backpack and a jacket, uh, mm -hmm. it's all possible. So I love, I love those tips. And do you find, um, I guess how, what percent of your business are hats would you estimate uh, of yourself? Oh, That's what I've seen a, a lot of the A huge percentage, right? Yeah. Like as long as we can get the hat in stock, right? And the colors that they want, like, you know, that that's still always, you know, a knack in my side, right? Like, yeah. um, but it's getting better, obviously. So, um, you know, just giving them variety. Yeah, that's, that's not horribly stressful at times. Good, good. Uh, one more photo uh, that I want to share and ask about. And the point of this one is uh, it looks that. like it's taken in the actual environment, right? Which yeah. really connects to your target audience. It is. It is. This is actually um, my favorite place to be besides obviously with my three amazing kids and my husband. But um, this is actually this hat. This is a drag racing um, client, the Wensley, Mr. They're just an amazing family, period. But um, this is actually on the wall right at the starting line, which is normally where you will find me when I am there. Um, and that was just important to me. I mean, their hat's beautiful. Their logo is beautiful. Um, and just being there, seeing it with the drag strip and the bleachers and everything behind them, I just, I love this picture and I love them. So I love this comment too. What a shot. Love that hat in the wild. <laughs> and that's, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it, it's just how it is. And I, I just, I love it. And, um, and I think that's what, if more people did that, I know we all get busy and I know, you know, shops aren't always the brightest with all the light, you know, and we're working really late nights. I know Josh and I, we were talking about that. You know, a lot of us are night owls and sometimes, and we're inside, right? Like you can't create clothing, you know, always out in the elements. So, um, being able to get out there and remember and be like, Hey, I'm going to this sporting event, right? Like take the hat with you, like try to remember, take the shirt with you 
right? Um, try to get those photos of the people wearing them and in their real environment, in their wild environment. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, this has been phenomenal. And I, I want to thank you for coming on and sharing all of these tips. I also want to encourage our audience that if you are watching this live and have questions, uh, we would welcome uh, your questions for Jax about uh, her business. Yeah, uh, any question, product photography, products she's using, uh, tips in the business, whatever you want to ask about. Uh, one thing I do want to uh, just go a little further on is you have great photos. Uh, where are you thinking about where these photos are going to be shared oh, at? And, and, and like, where is that? And what type of response responses are you getting from your potential clients? Absolutely. Um, I mean, social media, um, whether anybody has an opinion on it, it's something that we need in our business. Um, I mean, people now have a, in my opinion, a two second attention span and rebound, right? Like when you're scrolling with your finger, what, what is stopping you from stopping and looking at anything, right? So, um, and especially kids now, I mean, love mine to death, but I mean, they move faster than sometimes I feel the world is spinning. So what stops people, right? I give all of the pictures we take to my clients. Um, we may have taken them, we may have created the photo, but it's their brand, right? So where are they putting them? They put them on websites, they put them on their socials, they're super proud of them. Um, and so that's kind of cross-branding as well. That's super important to me is, you know, cross-branding is how can I help you and you help me, so. Awesome, and what are your uh, most used social channels where you're, where you're driving engagement with your customers? Um, obviously right now we're at Instagram and Facebook. Um, we have a TikTok that's, that's harder with apparel in my opinion, um, unless you have like live models and stuff like that's harder in my opinion, which I always don't have willing participants for that to jump in and make some dancing video and clothing. <laughs> um, but, um, and then uh, Pinterest too, that's getting really popular just because that, that platform has changed so much. Awesome. Uh, we do have some questions coming in, so I want to make sure we get to those. Uh, so we favorite. have, yeah, Dan Zane Printing Services. I'll read it to you so everybody can hear it. It says, uh, I'm in the process of taking photos for my website, which is under construction right now. Would you advise to pay a professional photographer or would you rather do it yourself? What's your opinion? Okay, so for in anything, professional photographer, everyone can be a professional. That doesn't mean that they're what you're going to want. For your website right so um, i'm going to advise you to find if you are going to pay a professional photographer um, look at their work ask for their ask for their background you want to see what they have done for website photography because that is very important um, you know if they're taking pictures of something else that is not going to be conducive to what you're doing on your website you know then they're just not going to be your person so do your background on that um, obviously for me um, I'm me, myself, and I with that. And obviously the kids, I have college kids um, that work for us and some uh, high school seniors. And again, I love them to death. Sometimes they're a pain in my butt. It's a lot of education with them and, you know, kind of moral ethic business stuff, but they also are super trendy and super fun and give me ideas all the time. So um, I'm thankful for that too. Awesome. And I would just add, it's pretty inexpensive to try it yourself. So give it a go, try see it. what you think of yep. the quality, and then you can always move on uh, to a professional. Or ask sure. questions. I mean, you know what I mean? Like how much is, there's always going to be someone that is willing to help you without a huge professional fee. Yeah. So uh, Kirk, you're like me, Kirk. I only remember the photos after I delivered the product, <laughs> right? That's another thing. Yeah. How fast, what's our timeline? When does it need to get out? Right. Um, but I think all of us, if we tried better, right? Like, and I will be the first one to admit, I, I sometimes so bad. I'm like, oh my gosh, we have not posted to our social media. Right. And some of my girls are like, I forgot. And I'm like, we have to do it, you know, and it's fun when we do do it. So let's do what makes us feel good and have a good time. Yeah. What's most important to you priorities. Yeah. Right. And then, uh, this is good. So Jane uh, took your tips and spends her weekends at the gym. And so she's going to start taking pictures there. It'll help with social media and her website. It will. People love um, accountability, first of all, but just, you know, who can you attract, right? Like who can you connect with? So if you're at the gym, like, you know, that is going to be an audience for you. Like take your pictures there, you know, and, and kind of think outside the box. It always just doesn't have to be, you know, a, a green screen or a photo backdrop, right? 
kind of, I love when he's like, oh, put it in the wild. Like literally go put it where, it, where it's going to be seen most. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Well, you've certainly dropped a lot of help and a lot of knowledge, but I have one more question for you. Sure. And that is uh, what's next as you look out into 2023, um, what's next for Jack's apparel? What's next for you? What, what's your goal? This year. Um, my goal is, and it's, it's funny, is just putting myself out there more, right? Being more um, relatable and having access to me and my business. Because sometimes when you're growing, you know, you get nervous and you're like, well, let me get my, you know, are my feet that wet? Like you get, you just get nervous with yourself or you doubt yourself. Um, but I've asked absolutely like confidence will win every time. And if you, you don't actually have to have it yourself, you find people around you, right? Um, I will not sugarcoat it. I was so nervous to be on today. And the girls are like, you're fine. You know, like, again, you know, just putting yourself out there and being proud of what you're creating in your own shop. Believe in yourself and, and other people will notice, I promise. Awesome. Great advice. And we thank you for, for stepping out a little bit and joining us. I know all of our viewers uh, have picked up tips today and learned a lot and are inspired to, to take some of these things and implement them. And I'm always business. accessible. If anybody has any questions, like I'm all about helping everyone. I that That's how the world becomes a better place. Help everyone else. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Jax. Thanks guys. Have a great day. All right. We appreciate everybody coming on uh, today for our Heat Press for Profit podcast. We are so thankful to Jax from Jax Apparel for joining us. And this is a podcast that not only you can listen to uh, anywhere you listen to podcasts, but you can watch live and participate. And so you can watch on the Stalls TV YouTube channel, the Transfer Express YouTube channel, on our LinkedIn account, over in the Heat Press for Profit Facebook group, or in those pages on Facebook. There are so many ways to engage with us, to interact with other business owners, and become car uh, part of the conversation. So we broadcast every week on Fridays at 12 Eastern time, bringing in new apparel decorator guests. So if you have something to share and you want to be a part of the podcast, make sure you connect with us. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you all next week.